Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to work with the derivatives of tangent and cotangent. So these two rules uh, help us take care of a few more trigonometric derivatives. And here's how they work. The derivative of tangent is simply secant squared. And the derivative of cotangent is a negative cosecant squared. So you'll notice that these are just a little bit more complicated than, say, sine and cosine, but you can use them fairly easily anytime you want to take the derivative of, say, one of these two functions. Let's go ahead and give it a try with, say, three examples. In this first one, we want to figure out what is the derivative of 4x cubed minus tangent of x. All right, so we'll simply start off by taking the derivative of this portion, bringing down our power, so 12x squared. And now we come to the tangent part, and we need to take its derivative. So the derivative of tangent is secant. I'm sorry, secant squared. Don't want to forget that little squared part. Uh, the negative sign is simply connected in between them, so we'll go ahead and copy that directly in there. So the derivative is 12x squared minus secant squared x. All right, let's give a second one a try. This one is f of x equals 5 cotangent of x plus 5e e to the x. And again, we want to know what is its derivative. All right. So the derivative of cotangent is my negative cosecant squared. And let's go ahead and write that negative sign all the way out front. So negative 5 cosecant squared of x. Then we'd take the derivative of the next part, uh, just like we normally would. So 5e e to the x, since its derivative is the same as itself. All right, and then that one's done. Now, these two new rules play very well with all the rest of your rules. So we're going to go ahead and borrow our product rule as we go ahead and try and figure out the derivative of sine of x multiplied by tangent of x. So before you uh, get too far down on this one, make sure you recognize that we have one function being multiplied by a second function. So we're really going to borrow our product rule in order to take care of this. Say so the first one times the derivative of the second, and the second times the derivative of the first. All right, let's see what we can do. So the derivative of this function would start off with our first function, which is simply a sine of x. All right, now we need to take the derivative of the second function. We'll borrow our new rule. So this is secant squared of x. Okay, that looks pretty good. Plus, now we have our second function multiplied by the derivative of our first function. And of course, the derivative of sine is cosine. All right, now anytime you're doing any type of trigonometric function uh, and looking for its derivative, make sure you simplify these as much as possible. If we write everything here in terms of sine and cosine, I think uh, we'll recognize just a few things that we can go ahead and simplify. So this would be sine of x multiplied by, say, 1 over cosine squared of x, plus this would be sine of x all over cosine of x multiplied by cosine of x. So I guess we don't have a whole lot in here that we could cancel, uh, but we can actually get rid of these cosines. And look at that, we have a common sine of x over here and another one over here. So we could actually take a, a sine of x out of both places. So one all over cosine squared x plus one uh, I think that's about all that will simplify. So let's go ahead and rewrite it back into our other trigonometric functions. So I have sine of x multiplied by our uh, secant squared of x plus 1. And now we're done. This is our derivative. All right. So with these two new rules, now you can do even more trigonometric derivatives. And if you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com. <laughs> MySecretMathTutor